remember the moment clearly, the unexpected flush of warmth creeping up my neck as mom gleefully presented an old photo album to Clara, my wife. There I was, caught in glossy immortality, dressed as a girl for some high school play. My initial reaction was a mix of embarrassment and dread, feeling like I'd been unwittingly pushed onto a stage. Clara's laughter, bright and genuine, filled the room as she flipped through the images. You look absolutely adorable, she declared, the twinkle in her eyes betraying her amusement. Meanwhile, I was wrestling with a whirlwind of self-conscious thoughts. But then she said something that caught me off guard, we should do this. Makeover Mondays. The next Monday rolled around with an air of anticipation. Clara had everything prepared, a selection of dresses, makeup, and even a pair of heels that, somehow, fit me perfectly. Standing in front of the mirror, with her deft fingers applying mascara to my lashes, I felt. Different. Not bad, just different. The figure staring back at me was elegant, poised, ultra-feminine. And so it became our ritual. Each Monday, I stepped into this alternate persona, and each click of the camera captured a smile that grew less forced, more genuine. Clara would share these new memories with Mom, and their laughter became a symphony that soothed any lingering doubts I had about this whole arrangement. We started going out, Clara's arm linked with mine. The city streets didn't know the man behind the makeup, and I found a strange liberation in that anonymity. The stares and whispers lost their edge, becoming just another part of the background noise. What began as an embarrassing trip down memory lane transformed into a journey of self-discovery, laughter, and unexpected joy. The connection with Clara only deepened, our shared Mondays a testament to the beauty of being loved for all that you are and all that you can be. As the Mondays became a cherished tradition, Clara's creativity knew no bounds. She suggested growing my hair out. At first, I balked at the idea, but her enthusiastic it'll be fun. Was irresistibly infectious? Before I knew it, I found myself in a salon chair, getting a stylish cut that somehow worked both for my daily life and our Monday escapades. Next came the perm. The soft curls bounced around my face, framing it in a way that was undeniably feminine. I remember looking in the mirror, the initial shock giving way to a curious appreciation. It was a different me, but it wasn't unwelcome. The changes cascaded from there. Body hair vanished, leaving behind smooth skin that felt alien yet strangely comforting. My eyebrows, once thick and unremarkable, were now shaped into elegant arches by Clara's steady hand. These alterations to my appearance began to blur the lines of my identity. During the week, people started to mistake me for a woman. The first few times it happened, I corrected them, a knee-jerk reaction born from a lifetime of habit. But as the occurrences became more frequent, the correction stopped. I played along intrigued by the interactions that unfolded when I wasn't immediately pegged as a man. The world, I discovered, treated me differently. There was a gentleness, a willingness to smile that hadn't been there before. Clara found it fascinating, and her support made me bold. I experimented with my voice, my mannerisms, finding comfort in the fluidity of my gender presentation. It wasn't always easy. There were moments of doubt, of wondering what I was doing and why. But then I'd catch Clara looking at me with such love and acceptance that all my fears seemed to melt away. Our life together became a canvas, and every Monday added new colors. Some would fade by the week's end, but others lingered, reminders of the person I was becoming, not just on Mondays, but every day.